we're going to be exploring how we can use alerts and prompts within a spreadsheet. So attaching them to the UI and having the tab here at the top of the menu button that the user can click and they can select either from an alert or prompt. So this will trigger the function to run. And for the alert, we're returning back. We've got an alert message and then we've got a bunch of buttons that we can select from. So depending on what the selection, we're going to have a different response back to the user. So whatever selection they make here is going to run the code and pop up another alert with their response. And the second part is where we're going to be creating a prompt, which is going to ask for a username. If you don't enter anything, try to cancel OK. It will continuously ask for your username. If you do have some content in here and if you hit OK, then it's going to end the loop and it's going to have an alert with the user's name that was placed within the input pop-up. So all of that is coming up. Go ahead and log into your Google account. I'm over at drive.google.com, logged into my Google account. I'm going to create a brand new spreadsheet and that you can do from the folder, drop down menu, and then Google Sheets. And that will open up and create a brand new spreadsheet. So let's give the spreadsheet a name. So this is just going to be our testing spreadsheet. And we're going to be creating a bound script using Google Apps Script bound to this spreadsheet. Or actually, let's just call it test UI menu. So that when we look in the drive, we know which sheet that uh, we're testing the UI menu on. You can select the app script under the extensions at the top of the screen in the tab menu, select apps script. So that's actually moved from tools to extensions in the latest version and you're selecting and opening up the Google apps script. Then this is going to open up the script editor, a brand new interface with the script editor. And this is the bound script that's attached to the spreadsheet. So I'm going to also call this test UI menu and call it test UI menu script. So give it a rename so that it matches with what we've got for the spreadsheet. And so this is where the Google app script is going to go, where the bound script is going to go. I'm going to make the screen slightly bigger. So it's a little bit easier to read the code. The code is sitting there within the right hand bottom side of the screen. And this is where we can add in the different functions. The first function that we're going to start with is going to be adding the UI menu. So we want this to run on a trigger and the trigger that we're looking to run this on is the on open. So what will happen whenever the spreadsheet gets opened, it will automatically run this function and this function, we want to select the UI object and then add an item to the UI menu. So we can just use the spreadsheet app. And we can set up a variable calling it UI. And so this will select the spreadsheet app and then we get the UI object. So selecting it with the rounded brackets to indicate the object that we've selected. And you can also chain these objects together. So if within the UI, we select the UI object that we've just selected. And from here we can create a menu. And this menu is going to require one parameter and that's going to be the label. And the label is going to be what we're going to see within the spreadsheet. So I'm going to call it ADV for advanced. And let's add another item to the menu. So just to do an add item, I'm going to indent this. So it's a little bit easier to read. So this again is still going to the UI object and we're just chaining it together. So we're not ending this statement. We're just chaining together another item to it. So that's adding the item and this is going to add the actual menu item to the list. And we need to require two parameters and they're both string values. So the first one is going to be the label and I'll call it alert. And then the second one is going to be the function name that we want to run. And I'll call that show one. And then once we've completed adding the items, we can add all of the items to the UI with the add UI method and close off that statement. Save the project. And now every time the spreadsheet opens, we're going to run this and it's going to invoke this function and run the code within the function. It is the selection of the functions to run. So I'm running the on open using the run. And within the execution log, you're going to see once it's completed the execution. Now when we navigate back over to the spreadsheet, in the top menu, we've got the tab 
uh, ADV. So that's going to correspond with the value that we have within the create menu. And then if you update it, you can you need to run the code again, or you need to open up the spreadsheet. And then within the drop down, there's just going to be one option here to run the function for alert. So we haven't set up the function yet for show one. So let's create that function. And this is going to be the one that's actually going to get invoked and run this block of code whenever we press the alert. So let's go ahead and we'll press it. And right now we're not going to have anything happen. It'll just say that this finished script. So let's go ahead. We're going to select the UI menu item as well. And there's also a way to shorten this. So I'm going to just remove out some of the coding there and clean it up a bit because you can just chain this all together. And this is actually still going to do the same thing. It's just a little bit neater and shortening of the code. So we don't need that many lines of code in order to accomplish that. So there's our advanced with the capital ADV. So once we've selected the UI object, we're going to return back the alert. So this is going to be the result of the alert or the response of the alert and selecting the UI object and we can run the alert method. So let's go ahead and add in a string value and this is going to be the question that we're asking the user. So just ask them if they're ready. So now when we go out and we try it, we run the alert function, we get the value of ready and then we've got the default buttons. So you can customize the buttons that are being output by comma separating and then we can set the button value that we want to use and that's contained within the UI object and we can select the button set and then the button set has options to do either OK, OK cancel, yes, no or yes, no cancel. So let's do the yes, no cancel button set and we'll save it and then we'll run the alert another time. So now we get all three buttons and you always have the close button here up at the top right. So yes, no, or cancel. So those are the options that we have for within the alert. And once the button is clicked, then that's going to log a value back to us. So we can go into the log and run the show one, which will have the pop-up. And notice that it's still going to be executing until a response is registered. So whatever response we register, that's going to be returned back within the response result there. And we're just simply right now we're logging it out. So we can use that response and we can have a condition that if the response result is equal to the UI button, and this is the button object. So if the value is equal to yes, then we can provide a particular response. And I'll set up a variable that we can use to hold a message. And by default, it'll just be blank. And if it's yes, then we can update that value. And I'll just write was yes. And else, we can set the message value, no response. So let's try that another time and click the alert. So now if we hit yes, then the message that we want to return back is going to be was yes. So let's take that message and we're going to output it in another alert. And this one is just going to hold whatever the message was that we got back. So we're going to be running two alerts. The first one, we're going to be waiting for a response. And then the second one is just to inform the user of that response. So our first alert is ready. And if we hit yes, then was yes gets returned. If we run it another time and we hit no, then we get no response was returned. So just as we picked up the button object with the UI, we can add in that option as well, where we're going to use the else if and check to see if the result was UI button and let's account for no this time. So if the value was no, then we're going to update the value of message to oh no and save and try that another time.
And so now if we do no, then we're going to get back another alert, a following alert that's going to say, oh, no. Let's add in another option here because we did have several there that we could do cancel as well. So the cancel option, and we also have the close option. So we can track that. So it was canceled. And let's do the last one where we can track the close as well. So the close was the other option. And depending on what action we take, what response we register for the alert, we're going to track that as a follow-up alert. And we're tracking all of them. So the cancel and then the last one is going to be the close. So you have an option when you do set the buttons that you can pick up the button values. Just like with JavaScript, we can always also do a prompt. So the prompt is another option for providing an input for the user. And it's going to work similar to what we saw with the alert. So let's create another function to manage that. And I'm going to duplicate that and have a function called show to. That's going to manage the prompt. So within the prompt, instead of doing the alert and picking up the response of the alert, we're going to set it up as the UI object and do a prompt. And so the, what the prompt will do is this allows us to get a text response as well as a button response. So within the prompt itself, we're going to be asking the user the question, ready, and then picking up the button response on that. And we can register both of those objects separately. So they're going to be returned back within the response object. And one is going to be whatever button was clicked. And we can get whatever button was clicked from the result. And we get the selected button method. And then the other one was the message value that was returned back. So this is the response back that the user is going to input into the prompt. So we're going to get the result and the response text method is how we can pick that information up. So just let me update this to show too. So this function will actually run. And then just within the UI, we'll add in an alert. And this alert will give us whatever we had for the text message response. And we already saw how the buttons work. So we can do it the same way where we pick up the button value. And I'm actually also going to update the button set because we don't need that many buttons. We can either have just an OK or a cancel option for the user. So let's uh, dismiss this. We're going to update the UI menu by running the on open. So that will update the UI to include the prompt option. So selecting the prompt will pop up the prompt alert. So there's our text question where we just got the ready. So that's just going to return back whatever the response was. So here, instead of asking for ready, I'm going to ask, so I'm going to ask your name, please. And then we're going to use that name and return it back to the user in the alert. So let's uh, have our condition to check to see what the result was from the button. So it's the BTN object. And we're going to be checking to see what we've got for the UI button. And the button that we're looking for is going to be the OK or the cancel that we had. So if it's OK, then what we want to do whenever it's OK. And I'll do the same where we've got the full message so that I can output the message. And we can construct the message within here. So using the string value. And this will just say welcome. And then whatever we had for the message object. So that should be the user's name. And if it's not OK, so that could be one of the other ones where it's closed or cancelled. So then the message was, we need your name. So let's uh, try that out now. Where we've updated the prompt. So it's asking for a name. So just entering in my name. And then it will provide a welcome message. If we provide a name, if we try to close it, it'll say welcome. If we cancel it, 
it's going to say we need your name. So we should also trigger the value if the value of message is not, the value of the length of the message is not greater than zero. So let's uh, try that now. And this time we shouldn't accept anything that's blank. So now it'll throw an error if it's blank in Alaska. It'll say that we need your name. So let's update this to call back and continue to ask for this prompt until we actually get a name that we can use. So let's update the code. I'll make this slightly smaller so it's got more screen area to work with the code. And I'll create another function that we can call back to until we finally get the response. So I'll just call it checker. And then within checker, we're going to need the UI object. And it's going to ask all of this information. And if we don't get the response that we need, it'll just loop back to checker. And if we do get the response that we need, it'll return back the welcome message. And we can get rid of that part. We'll return back the welcome message. And then we can use that to output to the UI. So here, message can just equal checker. We can get rid of all of this content. We still need the UI because we've got the message alert popping up. So we still need to register the message value. So I think I moved that accidentally. So we still need the message there that we're setting so that we could return back the user's name. And also, let's set it that we're going to be passing in and using the same UI object. So we'll pass through the UI, pass the UI here. And this actually should be a return. So we're turning back the checker and it's requesting that UI object again. And just save that. So this way, when we click the button, it's going to invoke the function show to. It's going to register the UI object within the spreadsheet app. And then it's going to make a request to checker passing in that UI object. The UI object is going to be picked up as uh, one of the parameters here within checker. And then we're using that within the same UI and asking the prompt, getting the button, getting the response text, making sure that the button is equal to OK, and the length of the message response text is greater than zero. And if it is, then we can return the welcome message. Otherwise, we're going to be returning back to checker, and we're going to be continuously looping until we actually get a string value returned back within the response. So let's try it out. So please enter your name. So if we don't enter in a name, or if we try to cancel, or if we try to close, this will always be popping up. Let's enter in a name, and then we get the welcome, Lawrence Svekis, and then if you hit OK, then it's going to end the pop-up screen and the running of the pop-up content. And just save that one more time. So once we refresh and once we reload the page, all we're going to see is that advanced tab. So it's right now it's running the on open, and once the on open finishes running, we've got the one advanced tab there with the two options. First option is the alert. So that's going to trigger the alert to run. And the second one is the prompt where it asks for a name. If we enter in a name, it will provide us a welcome alert on the screen. And then going back into the app script, since this is a bound script, you can always access it from the spreadsheet. And this will open up the app script editor and you can update and see the code. So now it's up to you create your own version of this add on and the alerts and the prompts to get more familiar with what you can do with alerts and prompts as UI objects in Google Workspace.